Get set for more fireworks over foreign workers flying into Australia to take up local jobs. One of the most powerful business leaders in the world says his company will have to import workers for major projects in Australia because productivity here is too low, the dollar's too high and labour costs too much. Peter Voser is the global CEO of Shell, which is set to become one of the largest investors in Australia over the next five years, spending about $30 billion on resource projects. Mr Voser's been in Australia this week and he spoke exclusively to 7.30. Mr Voser, thank you very much for joining us. It's great to be here. Thank you. Shell is investing more than $30 billion in Australia over the next five years. Given the global economic uncertainty, you must consider it a pretty safe place to invest then. Yeah, that's absolutely correct. Uh, we are investing those uh, sums of monies because we take a 20, 30 years view rather than just the next two, three quarters. And in that sense, historical experience and also our forward-looking experience for Australia is very positive. In a couple of weeks, Australia will introduce a $23 a tonne price on carbon. How will that impact on the bottom line of your business here? Let me first say that Shell as a company is actually... Uh, very much advocating that we need a price for carbon on a worldwide basis and we want that to be on a market mechanism. So for years actually Shell has in, uh, included in all the projects a carbon price of $40 a tonne. So from that point of view we take a very long term view that the carbon will be priced and needs therefore to be covered in our profitability in the projects. You say that you've factored in a price of $40 a tonne. Do you think then that Australia is underpricing carbon? I think um, if you have a market mechanism, it would actually be established by the market. If I look today across the world, I think you don't have too many who would be above that uh, price of the Australian um, uh, price at this stage. But as I said, we take a 20, 30 years view and over that time we will judge on, on how our $40 will match um, all the countries where we are investing into. You say that there aren't too many countries in the world that would have a price above that $23 figure. Do you think that that is a problem? problem at all for Australia's competitiveness as, as a place for international companies to invest? I think it's more than just a carbon tax. I think it's the whole country and how um, interested the country is into um, foreign investments and developing big resource projects. So it's about labour productivity, it's about fiscal terms, it's about the overall environment um, to how you get permits established, how you can actually invest. So carbon is own, tax is only one of the elements and I think in general uh, the Australian country uh, is, a, is an important and an interesting area to invest for us. What do you think will happen over the long range to countries that don't price carbon? Um, I think they will not uh, achieve uh, the long-term policies the world is going to set. I think they will be not competitive in attracting the right investments in the longer term. And therefore, I think we need really to get some agreements for the longer term now by more than just uh, Australia, by other countries as well, that we actually move in the right directions. And you see other countries have already gone there. And I think uh, it hasn't actually um, kind of worked detrimental to to the invest, investment policies of those countries. Given Shell's quite strong position on this, would your company be bothered uh, if the coalition parties in Australia came to government and repealed the carbon price as they have promised to do? No, I don't think we would be bothered. We would certainly offer our um, uh, advice, our insights on how we see the long-term energy market actually developing. And I think there can be discussions on how you actually build up a carbon um, price over the longer term. And let's be clear, um, we actually don't like carbon taxes too much. We actually like a market me mechanism for carbon pricing. So you could also actually work towards that in the longer term rather than to have a fixed tax. As I mentioned, Shell has some very major investments uh, happening in Australia. Given the tight labour market here, how are you planning to get the workers to staff these projects? Yeah, I think the, the overall competitive um, productivity rates in Australia are really a, con, a concern. I think you have the high um, Australian dollar, you have got um, a scarce um, workforce in that sense and therefore we are concerned about the overall um, rates which we are paying for Australian labour and that clearly needs uh, some interventions from our side to make our projects more, um, more economic. So this is an area which uh, is of high interest to us and um, uh, is a concern for the 
longer term competitive nature of Australian gas projects, which are already today some of the most expensive ones. And in order to stay competitive for Australia, um, some measures have to be taken here. And what sort of measures do you think should be taken? I think um, clearly here we need um, more, more um, workforce, so we need to be free to import labour as well, uh, quite clearly. Um, we need to optimise the supply chain. Some of it will have to be built outside uh, Australia in order to actually get the cost um, better under control. And I think um, these are some of the measures. Um, I leave the exchange rate to, to those who can manage that one. That's not up to me, but um, it's a clear concern to us. But some measures we can, can um, can take and some need to come from the government. On the question of the importation of labour, Australian unions would say that they are bothered by that because they fear that it will lead to an erosion of conditions for Australian workers. What would you say to that? I think um, as a business we also have uh, the, the clear desire to bring technology and innovation into, um, into Australia. So therefore actually I think there is a, a future for Australian labour force as well to actually work in new areas. Let's take floating LNG which we are building. We are doing now research uh, within Australia for, for this as well. So I think there will be new areas where we can actually um, employ um, Australian um, the labour force. But I think in order to actually stay competitive and work for the revenue flow into the countries, we need to make sure we can invest in a, in a competitive way. And for that, we need uh, to make the best out of it and bring some people in so that we can actually deliver our projects at a competitive rate. Peter Vosa, we very much appreciate you making time to speak to 7.30 on your trip to Australia. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me.